Hi everyone, this is Sonali. Thank you all for giving us some time for attending today's webinar on the part three of the BX Learning series, all about finding the right value in a business. To all the attendees out there, please type in any questions you might have in the Q and A section, and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the session. Request you to keep the questions within the scope of today's discussion and not to your personal business queries. I would now like to welcome our speaker. Uh, Mr. Gaurav Maria, Chairman and Founder of the Franchise India Group. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sonali. Thank you very much, Sonali, too, for inviting me again for another series and, and organizing this uh, regular webinar. This is the third in the series. Uh, we have divided every week to take up one topic. The first topic we took up was how to invest. Then the last week was how to scale. And today's is how you value your business. And today's webinar, we'll talk about uh, why you should value your business, how you should value your business, and when you should value your business. That's very important that we go through this whole cycle. This webinar is now, uh, and that's my apologies also for the little delay in terms of uh, starting because this is uh, in three platforms running. It is running on, on our Facebook uh, uh, Live. It is also on Zoom, and it is also been uh, real-time telecasted on our exhibition first digital exhibition which franchise india is hosting today which is attended by over 4000 odd people uh, it's also been telecasted there so the integration of technologies and also everybody working remotely sometimes got a lot of delays uh, so sorry for that so let's start with uh, the valuation part of it and why so it is so important and especially now you know and these times where everything has changed uh, the way we looked at businesses uh, uh, before march are very differently way we're looking at businesses now. The promoters who were very involved and committed to their businesses may would have changed by now. So a lot of uh, people who were not looking to exit the business might like to exit the business now. And some people would see this as an opportunity to acquire a lot of businesses. So a lot of things would change in, which has already changed as a mindset, I call it in last three months. And this would start changing significantly over next two quarters. And we will see the large amount of MMA is coming in 2021. And especially at the, we have never seen this happening at the entry and the mid level. And I see a huge, huge opportunity coming at the entry and the mid level, both in terms of the consolidation, a lot of MA, a lot of equity participation, and so on and so forth. I also feel there is a big worry that a lot of businesses would exit without having any value. And that's very painful to me because I feel that every business, whatever it is and whatever stage it is, it has some inherent value. And sometimes business owners are so busy in their own businesses and in their work, they have never had time to value your business. Now, I ask this question to every business owner that you know the value of everything you possess. You know the value of your house. You know the value of the jewelry you have, the investments you've done in financial world, the properties you own, even the watch you wear, you know the value. But the business which you run for years and years and years together and every day you put in 12 hours or 14 hours of business you don't know the value and i'll tell you why you don't know the value and that's why in india only one percent of business or less have been valued so fundamentally and these are also companies either listed because listed you have a market capitalization so you know what the market cap available with you or the companies which have unlocked their equity which means that they have invested, uh, they've got an investor coming in the business and at a certain stage, they have got the valuation of the companies and startups normally have done that and they are able to attract a lot of investors. Now the family businesses, traditional businesses, a lot of these businesses have no idea what the business is valued for. And I'll start with giving you some point, a firm can value, and this is basic, you know, a lot of people come to me and give me a lot of uh, answers around valuation and and try to make their own presumptions what valuation should be. I'll give you the starting point, and this is something which you should first of all note. The firm can have a value only if it ultimately delivers earnings. If the company, the brand business is going to eventually deliver earnings and what the quantum of earnings is, that's where the value is really built. The intrinsic value of an asset is determined by the cash flows you expect that asset to generate over its life and how uncertain you feel about these cash flows. So fundamentally, you need to really see what is what do you expect from this asset and the life value of this to what it needs to generate and how much uncertainty it carries. If you bridge these two things, 
then only you come with a valuation. So valuation by nature, uh, you know, by structure is, a, is an art. It's not so much of science. I call it valuation is an art. It's not so much of science. Uh, while we have a lot of scientific and, uh, and a very proven uh, methodologies available by uh, registered valuators, uh, uh, chart accountants, a lot of other uh, you know, consulting firms have a lot of methodology and we we'll talk about it, but, but still, this is still an art and uh, it's still not a science. So I will talk about how it becomes a structure. Now, another thing which is very important that capital raise is no more a business, is a, no more a choice because the businesses are changed. They continue to ask for, 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 for their growth. They need to have a reinvestment in their business, especially now the cycles have changed. You have to do a lot of innovation, a lot of re-engineering, a lot of new equipment you need to bring in, new packaging, new ways of selling, you know, what was interesting to reach out to customer, like what happened in retail. The, if you see the retail environment, the first 10 years, everybody was putting a lot of capital in building these brick and mortar structures and so on and so forth. And suddenly they realized that they're losing on uh, to the digital world and they all have to invest into their digital capabilities. So their fresh capital was required. And now I know a lot of good companies, retail companies, which didn't have that money available and they were not able to raise at the right time and they were not able to sustain the change. And now the changes are becoming even more faster. So unless and until you have ability to constantly raise uh, uh, your capital, you will never be able to be ready to handle the changes which the environment would offer you or the challenges the environment would offer you the, or the competition would bring in or disruptive uh, you know, ideas which would continue to come and hit the markets. And these disruptive ideas would force you uh, to really bring in that. And if you're not adequately capitalized, you will not be able to cope up with that. And I can tell you a lot of traditional seasoned businesses, which were running for decades, uh, are going out of businesses just because they are they have un, they've not able to unlock their their value or their capital. So <clears throat> you can only unlock your equity. And and this time, I think the greatest example we all are hearing these days is Reliance Industries. Reliance Industries, uh, you know, has uh, chosen the path and shown the path to the entire corporate world that how important it is uh, to really create a solid asset uh, which can be valued and and how important it is to uh, continue to raise that value because now so they have actually taken off debt out of their balance sheet and and actually brought in a lot of equity partners this is the way we should really look at businesses going forward and i strongly recommend that small businesses because we are a, a very large ecosystem of uh, small to mid businesses and i every forum i say debt is not good for these companies because debt is a uh, cost of capital in business models like us one it would it would it would disturb your balance sheet forever you know so the cost of capital sitting in a balance sheet is not good for small and medium enterprises uh, they just run to pay the interest which keeps coming in the businesses they're not able to take the business up so always don't mind even if it is your family run business even if you inherited your business from your father there should be no problem in unlocking your equity so let's uh, <clears throat> get into understanding of there is no one set formula of uh, uh, putting a business valuation, but let's understand what are the few starting points, what needs to be done. First, whenever you're designing your valuation, see from the eyes of the investor. You know, so calculated valuation doesn't mean unless an investor and a buyer agrees with your assessment and past performance of for the past performance indicators. So unless an adult, the, the buyer or the uh, investor is also able to see your assessment, and in the same way as you are able to see that assessment and also your past performance indicators are also showing those those benchmark and then i can relate and validate those benchmark then only i have something which is uh, moving on so always design your valuation from the eyes of the investor second understand the valuation cycle these are changing very fast why because our macro and micro uh, dynamics change very fast economical uh, changes industry changes competition has become very important and destructive now you don't know you know there are visible competition and there are a lot of uh, non visible competition which which suddenly come to you right and these are these can be anything it can be uh, for for any industry for you know even a uh, ola and uber became a big competition for auto sales right they were invisible competition you, you felt on one side there would be more cars on the road because ola and uber would come in but the truth is that if people start using these shared uh, vehicles uh, then they would not buy new cars so fundamentally, sometimes uh, 
we see the competition on different perspective and there is unseen competition we continues to hit you and, and a different structure like these days uh, this everybody is saying uh, you know television on demand or or digital content on demand is a big but it is also a big threat to multiplexes and your regular conventional channels and a lot of other things so so sometimes you know any disruption which is coming in can become a very strong part so you need to do your valuation cycles in accordance to that uh, you need to see where you are and you need to adapt things of that nature so i have seen a lot of businesses which get into fatigue and and then they're not able to get into the, the right valuation how you can keep your business is relevant and so i always insist that you you do get your valuation done and uh, every almost every year and then you will be able to uh, do that and also uh, why is so it is so important that you need to really find out what is your business worth and maybe we will talk about this uh, piece a little more in detail and what is the reason why you should really have uh, importance of uh, uh, finding out your business worth you know i have realized that uh, most of the times when when the need really hits you hard you know when like these times these times are very challenging times uh, very very demanding times and i am getting calls from a lot of companies which are reaching out to us especially our franchise companies and so on so and they coming and telling me i want to really look at an exit i am looking for an investor i am looking for things of that nature and when we look at their businesses their businesses were currently not designed uh to be uh, rightly valued why i say so because they they were running the business as they used to run they never thought that they would have to make themselves ready for a a future investor so they never really brought some changes to really design the business that it becomes more attractive to investor look please try to understand one single investor is always looking at 100 odd opportunities right why your opportunity will shine out out of that 100 that's very very important and unless and until you also mentally and organizationally prepare yourself for that uh, right valuation uh, you will not be able to uh, uh, do the valuation right i mean you will not get the right valuation rather people get shocked sometime when they get the valuation and people like us will go and say you will not get that valuation recently a one of technology companies we were valuating and we felt that there was nothing really about this company this was just a simple crm product and there are multiple competitions available go to market was extremely tough while uh, being a technology product young startup the expectation of valuation is very very, very different and the revenues were sitting as only 30 40 50 lakh rupees as a business model so we felt that this business has no no real value you know and why would somebody go in rather than putting some maybe 20 lakh rupees to build the similar or better platform so fundamentally you need to really see through and really get realistic on your business model that how your business model is uh, is right i always say that getting yourself valued can actually give you the biggest insight of what your operations you know and these are very important i always say that people because they don't sit on they don't get time business owners don't get time to sit on their own balance sheet and put it in somebody else perspective and especially if you invite some uh, independent evaluator or a business consultant who can value your business and you will find a lot of indications in your business which will tell you how you need to fix those things in your operations it can be your brand valuation itself let's see brand valuation is a one topic you know how much you're spending on brand valuation what is what is your cost of acquisition of customer is it sustainable uh, is it going to go reduce as we go along because now your brand would become more popular would it would it make sense that uh, this early years you are spending more but in 3 to 4 years would this come down what what is the inherent brand value which you need to be done or or what are you chasing as a value because sometimes we get in love with our brand and we start spending too much on marketing i also did this big mistake in our company and we went on Uh, i would call it berserk in terms of our spend in marketing uh, but uh, now i am realizing that there was a lot of audience we already built our focus should have been engaging rather than just doing more propaganda marketing so sometimes you're doing things but you don't see from a balance sheet view point you don't see from a future of a business view point and businesses and and emotions have to disconnect you know somewhere you need to see business in the full light of business so you need to really see what is happening on your brand you need to see what is happening on a lot of other things happening in your uh, businesses and especially one of the areas which i have realized in especially in retail kind of a companies or manufacturing companies uh, they see inventories as stock as as a as a as lying uh, asset in their books while it is fine but i feel that uh, are do you have uh, too much of money been locked in as your inventories or non performing assets you know i know a lot of companies which would say i have 10 crores of stock and if i go deeper into the business and 
find out that five crore is not moving. This is would never move, but it continues to show you on a balance sheet. You continue to make you happy that you have ten crores of stock. I know one big jewelry company used to claim that I have a thousand crores of jewelry, but when the audits were really deep down done, uh, we, they found that is only three hundred odd crores, and seven hundred was just pulled up. You know, and this was not working. The, you know, it was destroyed, and a lot of uh, stuff was. So it's a and it, uh, in in especially in the diamond and the silver jewelry, a lot of damages were there. But in a book value, it was still showing you. A very big value, and this creates a little bit of a core memory effect in and businesses and business owners that they start believing that this is a good asset sitting on that. While to me, they, this this has to be checked. So you need to really go and check what is what is your asset side. What is what is mon performing? Is how much inventories are real good inventories and so on and so forth. And also then you need to do your micro analysis of numbers, your HR cost, your occupancy cost. These days, everybody has realized that this unwanted offices and Large infrastructures, which created no real value to your balance sheet, was not to be done. I mean, even a company like TCS has said that they want to move 70% of the people work from home. Not so much from security viewpoint, because three years from now this virus would have gone. But TCS found that this was not wanted, and if they can invest into more into data security and give that same promise to people to work out of their home, the 70% of this infrastructure which they've deployed, and they have millions and millions of square feet under. Under management, which is a lot of cost and uh, expense on their balance sheet, if they can correct that, this can empower their people better. They can hire better kind of people because they can pay them well. They can give them more value, and they will be more happy to contribute back to the system. So it will all change. So these are all important areas which, whenever you are valuing yourself, you need to really find that how you bring business efficiencies in your company, and these business efficiencies should reflect in your uh, value. So. Uh, one of the areas i always say is one who knows price of everything but value of nothing so one means with you whenever you run a business you have price for everything i invested so much in my office i invested this much in my computer i invested them but you need to understand what value it is bringing to your business what is the value which is it is providing you so unless and until it is adding up summing up in the value it has no meaning it has no meaning it's just I mean depreciated asset lying in your systems Which you continue to carry as business owners and feel happy about it. So, and we'll talk about how do you really uh, <clears throat> do this structure. Now, let's get into the business valuation side and how how to value your businesses. You know, one of the areas which surprises me that uh, you know people, especially young people who come out of colleges, and we have many in business X uh, coming and doing valuations. They sometimes come with ridiculous numbers, right? They come with some numbers which I look at it. Uh, you know, they would take a startup and value it for. 40 crores 50 crores and and this is just maths up it's a maths up structure and i'll explain you how so valuations are always quantitative when i say quantitative which means is a number game right so i would say next year i will have so much more revenue i will have so much of better margin i will have so much of this so much of that so and i'll do 30% year on year growth and i will continue to do for 10 years and then i discount my sales at a certain level 4 to 5 years from now and i will come down to discounted cash flow and and then say this is my valuation of the business this is very simple this is this is a quantitative structure of uh, adding up things right it is adding up from x to that level while this is the way valuation should be done uh, there is no argument in that but here the valuation itself becomes an objective i'll tell you how most of the valuation people keep a objective in mind that i should be valued at 40 crores and they sum up all this to come up at 40 crores this is a maths which which disturbs me because i feel that fundamentally they just sum up something there is sometimes no back history your last two years three years performances have only been 10% or a negative growth and next three years you want to show that you will do 25 30 40 50% percent, in some cases 100% growth how this is going to be possible right while well, as the companies become little uh, you know first two three years have passed and the company has gone down to a little bit of maturity cycle the growth rather becomes even more difficult to achieve that's an argument right so bringing growth is not easy then because you already done your honeymoon period and honeymoon periods are always easy for the first two three years you can you can actually grow very very fast everybody grows very fast every startup grows very fast but after three years four years your growth actually declines and that that is the time you are actually reaching out to investor and telling him that look i will grow at 30% or 40% how this is going to be done and then the function is that you will create some kind of a matrix to show those numbers but these would not add up this objective is very clearly already set that you have a valuation in mind 
and there will be always uncertainty in numbers as they will never predict the company's real performance and economy as large because economy also change you might predict your numbers but economy has a different indication right like these days you know we will have a negative growth if you have negative growth on the other side you are showing your growth very high it it would should not it's not collaborating it's never going to collaborate so <clears throat> before you go to I mean detail down valuation you need to really understand a few things in your on your balance sheet you need to understand your tangible assets tangible assets which are still uh, you know uh, actively adding value to your balance sheet and adding value to your business so tangible assets can be anything which is property uh, you know machinery inventory any kind of uh, asset which is available in your system can become a tangible asset uh intangible assets can be all a lot of things you know which can be your recognitions trademarks your so to say brand value the kind of investment you've done in building the brand and your patents and so on so forth all that is becomes your intangible value then you also need to very carefully understand your liability side how much is a liability sitting on your on your balance sheet what are these liabilities which are softer loans other loans which you have carrying on the entire thing or you have to pay some vendors payments are standing your payouts other payouts have to pending some statutory uh, payments have to be anything which is which is running on 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 this everything you need to create your overall financial matrix what is your financial matrix looks like and how do you really see uh, in in changing few things on your uh, you know liability to asset size changing uh, how you can really define overall profitability and performance of the of the business so i over the years have found a very simple method of uh, finding a, a structure of valuation i call it sas principle s a s principle now this s a s principle is very simple I, every time a business is presented to me for valuation i always look at uh, while i would tell my financial guys to do the financial part of it business but i always look at from this sas principle i always look at business that what is the first s s first s set for the subscriber value what is the lifetime subscriber value in this business which means that what is this customer base how this customer is going to continue to make purchase decision with this asset for the next 3 years 5 years 10 years 15 years what is the lifetime value of that a uh, subscriber and if the there is no subscriber it means that you are acquiring almost every time a new customer it it disturbs me i don't see the business from a subscription value view point so businesses should have a strong subscription value if you are acquiring almost every time a new customer in your business then then you i will not give the marks on this s this s i will take it out i will say this is, has no subscriber value you you pretty much have to acquire every time a new customer uh, but almost every businesses i would know would have some form of subscription value you know they would have uh, people buying them, but only few businesses which have uh, not so much of uh, a subscribers been built in uh, i feel that this s is missing so the second s a is a stands for clearly assets your fixed assets your current assets your investments and your intangible assets so all kind of assets which is uh, which are available your fixed assets which you you already deployed as an investment in the capex your current assets which means that you have uh, whatever the current assets your you know you know money lying in the bank and things of that nature which is your uh, current uh, liquidity and your your overall investments like as a business you've gone and invested made investment in uh, some property some other businesses or mutual funds or any other in financial investments you've done and your intangible assets so we will bundle these assets and uh, and look at from a depreciation of some of the assets and, and come out of the value and third is what i call the strategic value strategic value is also very important because it gives me a lot of understanding of why this asset is known so a lot of time the we've sold especially in the retail side we sell businesses because there was a fantastic location you wanted to acquire or there was a go to market capability you know so you always wanted to get into market and you wanted that spot and you will never get it i give this example like in bangalore almost every bar used to have a good value because the licenses were not available so if you wanted to get into a bar business in bangalore you have to acquire something so there was a very clearly value of that license uh in there what is the strategic value in that that business model so we look at saas from three perspectives subscription value asset value and and a strategic value sometime in assets you have all three sometime you have two sometime you have only one and whatever that is you will take the business uh, to the next level now look at the cycles of uh, stages of valuation when you look at a very early stage company which have no historic data performance in so on so forth 
Uh, so obviously it, it carries a lot of risk in predictability of that business model. So how do you really show that predictability to an investor that this business in the next three to five years looks promising? And unless and until there is a very strong uh, you know, technology innovation, or this, this normally early stage businesses run on two basic foundations to me. I always value them from two foundations. One, what is a real valuation? What is a real, real uh, ask they are trying to uh, deliver? And second is who's the founder? You know, founder has to have a huge credibility. He actually carries the, the sometimes 60% of the valuation only on his own shoulders. That's normally on the startup kind of a company. Then you have a mid-size companies which have some performance already been done, but they've come down to a little bit of a growth trajectory. And at a growth trajectory, they need to really change the orbit and they need more capital to come in. So they, they need differently. And when the large companies come in, that's much easier to value because these companies have a very historic data which tells you how they're going to do. So we need to ask a few questions before we really go into uh, valuation of any businesses. We say, how predictable is your future cash flows? You know, if somebody is able to show predictability in some kind of book size and say, this is what my business is going to look like, I like those businesses. How do you improve your margins, hence profitability going forward? You know, one of the areas which I feel that margins actually get become more and more tighter as your businesses grow and you have more cost coming in, you have inflation hitting you, your margins are the shrink. If somebody really demonstrates to me that, look, I, I, I have a method to improve my margin. And sometimes the margins are not just a basic math of saying, oh, because I will have economy of scale, I will scale it up more, my margins would improve. That's a dumb call, right? Because these are very small shifts you were able to do, very, very small marginal differences you're able to do. And your inflation is then even going in India very, very high. So eventually, that call is actually almost all every time failed. We've seen a lot of private equity companies investing into businesses which prove, which actually made commitments that I will, because of economy scale, I will be able to improve margins. The rather actually the example is that they have not been able to do. The clear fact is that economies of scale alone cannot handle your operations uh, margins. You need to do something very radical uh, to improve your, your margin and profitability. Uh, what is, what would you, how would you sustain and and stabilize your performance. You know, this is another very important that, uh, you know, st stability in businesses are very important. You know, sometimes the, I've seen good businesses, not so great or not so good now because they were, they lacked few things. They lost some customers for something. They lost their key teams. They lost something else happening in them. And I think the stability of the business is very, very important in sustainability of that. What is your founding team? Who's your key guys? Who are the bankable resources would always be remaining there. Who's your competition inside and outside? Sometimes you have bigger inside problems. You know, the, there are companies now which are actually started by the CEOs of the same company, right? So they've become competition to them. I think they take the talent. They take uh, in financial services. This was a big problem. Financial services, almost all companies came from uh, another company, right? So, so they 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 know the, the they know the game very well, and they were able to quickly shift. Uh, the, the entire business to the entire team. So there is a lot of inherent risk these days in technology, IP businesses, uh, you know, that there is a competition which is really coming from inside. And so how do you really control that? And how you're controlling that uh, problem with the inside and outside also? And uh, and what is their influences and what is the larger threat to uh, businesses? So this is how uh, business is done. Another area which is very important for everybody to understand when investor invest into businesses, he doesn't look for so much of dividends. Please take it that out of your market. They look at more from their equity performance, which means that how, if I invested at an X valuation, is this valuation going to go up over the next three to five years? And second, am I able to find my exit at a particular time, which is forecasted by me? So which means that if I say, I will invest into this asset, one next three to four years, I have predictability of my equity growing. Second, in three to five years, there is a mechanism been built that I would be able to exit that business. No investor gets into business to stay there while they claim that I'm a long-term, always invested kind of investors, but very few investors I know uh, would not would go into business without having a very clear predictability of exit being given. Now, other few things which uh, business owners uh, uh, do a lot of mistakes, uh, they, they, they don't understand the difference between the asset value and the overall business value. You know, most of the time I ask people, what is the value of your business? They would say, oh, I invested so much. I have so much lying and I have this inventory and I have this asset and I have my own office and I have, so things of that nature. They just try counting their chairs and tables and 
computers and lot of those things and they don't understand the value of the business and i can give you the golden rule the only thing which matters to businesses and value of businesses is profit everything is around it so and profit is a life journey of a business life journey which means you might not be a profitable today that's all right but 3 years from now 4 years from now how can you show or demonstrate a very large profitability of the business model if you're not able to show that profitability very very clearly to investors they don't like your business that's out and clear so don't try to show they're not impressed with what you've invested nobody is trying to impress get with what i've invested rather they see this all as a as a as a as a waste because you deployed monies in in depreciable assets which are all going to depreciate eventually right uh they they're buying into a balance sheet and balance sheet uh, uh, would find a depreciated asset you might still have physically the assets available but they have all depreciated in the balance sheet right so <clears throat> so how do you really uh, show your net profitability of the business model and then on profitability you would need to then concentrate on what kind of multiples you can get on that profitability and and a lot of people come and talk to me and say what is the top line multiple and things like that i always look at the bottom line multiples and even if you have don't have now that's okay you can demonstrate in next year next to next year next to next year whenever you do this profit induction in the thing that's where the valuation really can has to be hit if you tell the investor that look third year from now i will have a strong uh, ebitda and that becomes your position of multiple and then you can ask for a multiples if you are a relatively smaller company and a relatively early stage company this can go from a maybe 2 to 10 anywhere depending on which industry you are how your performance has been what is the competition how crowded the market is and da 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 so lot of other things uh, can come in <clears throat> but if you are a much mature company market leadership uh, category creator a couple of other things then your multiples can go even beyond 10 it can go up to 14 15 16 in in very very unique cases we have found that multiples can go 20 and and even above that and so that's how uh, the multiples would really so first you really have to understand what is your most performing year uh, and your profitability for that year that's the year where you would get the best valuation from anybody who's who's valuing your business at that stage and you need to also see uh, what is the <clears throat> uh, you know structure and also you need to really see uh, what is your industry telling you have you researched the industry what is the research other players in the industry how they've been valued in the industry that's very important and why they were valued what what they had uh, which is better or bigger than you had to have and that also has to be realistically done sometimes the market is not that big you know so not everybody gets valued there is only one or two early players get value and rest everybody is just copying them because oh that guy got valued i will also get valued look at what is happening on ola now there was a uber which is a global company then there is ola between these two companies they are doing the entire fulfillment you are not facing that shortage of cabs you are not facing anything now a lot of other players are trying to come in the same space with trying to understand that they might be get valued like ola and uber actually is absolutely waste of money waste of money and effort unless and until you have either a very big again shift of customer and the reason for that shift which means people would stop using ola and start using you uh, unless and until there is a big shift of that customer happening with the entire thing i don't see there is inherent value you know so you might deploy any kind of money you know unless and until you have ability and you should have not have a mindset like we used to have in license raj in license raj you used to have a license and once you get a license you also have a right to get market share like telecom companies i you can they will give two more licenses and these companies would also come and to also get some market share when you are in open market uh, consumers are very clear that they want the best they don't want the second third fourth fifth best right so so don't try to do that this whole license raj has gone finished it's not that you get a cement license now i can also manufacture a license and you will build a value in the business it this is an open world now unless and until you are have a very strong competitive edge you will not be able to uh, deliver value so research on your industry understand your health of your business from a financial history if it is not been good at least it takes 18 to 2 month to 18 months to 2 years to restructure your company so a lot of restructuring has to be done in your business model how you want to do that there is never a late situation never a late even if you are a 30 year old company 40 year old company you can give yourself year and a half or two years and say let's restructure this company and restructuring might call for a lot of radical uh, answers to be done a lot of changes to be brought in a lot of the way you want to look at businesses how you can become you know this asset light and opex light and how you will build better performances in business a lot of changes in your talent management organizational structure everything can be done 
and you can bring in a better health of the company. And if you're able to demonstrate that change cycle in your businesses, you again refresh yourself and you're ready for a better valuation. And uh, another thing which business owners have to also see that some businesses are extremely dependent on the entrepreneur himself. So one of the reasons I see a business is not able to sell and one of my companies was not, we, were, we took the business uh, investor wanted to buy and he asked me the same question. And he says, uh, this business is totally dependent on you. And uh, if you're not there, this business would not really be running. And uh, while I did my own convincing, but he was very damn sure that I, he, I was very deep rooted in that business. And, and he felt that this business, because it's running because of you, and if you are trying to leave this company or you would like to depart from this company, this business would not remain safe. So fundamentally, you need to understand that if you, if you are so integral to your business and you cannot leave this business or business would have a deep impact where you're leaving out what plan you are making or what succession you are making that this change happens and the business becomes radically uh, uh, able to handle. While they all live love founders, but they also get threatened by founders. You know, founders become too close to their businesses. They don't leave the businesses that easy. And now these days we're seeing that that companies find it a full cycle. There was a Bunsels had 10 year cycle with Flipkart, growing it, building it up, valuing it and exiting it. And the Flipkart is still running. So, <clears throat> but this was very clearly planned. This was a very planned structure to get them exit because eventually if you want to create a larger enterprise or a institution, this would need to churn that. Fortunately, in India, we have succession plans coming from family and, and so on and so forth. But if you want to completely exit the business, the, one of the areas we need to do is that you need to find out, uh, is your business, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, can run without you. Now, what is the right time for valuing your business? You know, what is a good time you should look at the valuing business? One, you have peaked out. So one of the reasons I always say, when you want to exit the business, or you want to do that because you picked out, you, you did whatever you want to do that. You have getting no answers from anywhere, no book you're reading, no strategy attending, a seminar you're attending, you're getting any idea to grow your business. This time has come, find a buyer. And that's what Business X does. Business X actually finds you buyers uh, if you want to sell your business. So you have picked out. Second, you will see that this is a, there is an orbit change and it needs fresh capital. And you clearly see that there is a bigger audience available but you need a bigger capital, right? If you, if you want to catch that orbit, you need to reinvest uh, business and that either you don't want to reinvest your family wealth again in the business, or uh, you don't have that money to invest because this would need a new churn cycle, right? Like Reliance retail is just about 15 years old. And now they're getting into a fresh cycle of investment because of the geomart and the technology and everything else and everything else in the past they've invested might become redundant, right? So they are coming with a fresh cycle of investment. And uh, I know other company I don't want to mention, which is the competition doesn't have that capital. So what would they do? They have to exit. They have to exit because they don't have that capital. Because like in telecom, Reliance is ready for 5G and other companies have no money to even sustain 4G. They have no idea how to get 5G. And if 5G hits by Reliance, everybody customer would ask for it. And if they don't have capital to do it, they would end up. So they, what they need to do, either raise, or exit and find another buyer who is much more credible and much more bigger, and they would need to do that. Also, another thing, which is the opportunist way of looking at valuation, which a lot of people are able to do, there is an early sign of consolidation in any industry. Any industry gets into early sign of consolidation. This is exactly a good time where you should jump on it, where you should ask for a valuation for your business. I've always found that people who got the best valuation, when this co-working thing started, the first four, five, six companies which came in the market all got valuation because there's early sign of consolidation, the early sign of, uh, you know, the industry. And there was, a, uh, you know, uh, and there is a, some kind of a early stage advantage. They never miss that boat. Never. Some people get into this whole cycle. No, no, I would like to value myself going uh, one year from now or two years from now. Let me build more and I don't need the capital at this stage or I don't want to disinvest at this stage or things of that nature. They miss the boat. They miss the boat because this is a, uh, very another area which you should always see never fight the elephant right so anytime you start a business you're great you're doing well and you suddenly start seeing an elephant coming through which means the large company has already entered that market always be very sure that you want to collaborate at this stage just knock the door of that company and say ah, you're inventing this i've already done this i'm already ready with this it might be give you a much faster go-to-market strategy 
rather than going and, and creating the yourself. And this would create a lot of merit. I know at early stage, whenever large companies start looking at a category, they always look at evaluating businesses which are already there in the market. It gives them a lot of market understanding. They, they say very expensive, corporate has a very expensive uh, uh, you know, mistakes which they don't want to do because uh, corporate mistakes are not like small business mistakes. They end up losing a lot of money because their resources are expensive, their, their structures are expensive, and it also can create a, a lot of setback for the reputation of their corporate. So they always goes with, with a bit of a caution. They don't, they don't mind putting a top dollar to get their learning in the system. And I know a lot of corporates, I can give you examples, which actually bought over businesses, brought these businesses in their system and then made them redundant. Right, just because they wanted to get the learning out of that business inside the bank. And sometimes you are able to redundant, sometimes the business is such inherently rooted in the system, like uh, Coca Cola acquired Thumbs Up to kill Thumbs Up and kill other brands and bring Coca Cola up. But they later realized that this was too rooted in this business and they cannot do it. It's still a quality asset when they started running that uh, parallelly. But there are many examples which these companies acquired and they left it and uh, they took the learnings, they took the the whole IP around it, and these IPs were so important to them that they, they never wanted to look back. To this so uh, another area which is uh, how how expandable your your uh, you know uh, consumer base is. This is very also very important aspect of valuation because uh, sometimes uh, you have built a very large consumer base, but you're selling very tiny uh, product line to them and. And if you can show the unlocking of your the same consumer base, this consumer base can go wider. You know, some people have, uh, you know, I, I see small companies, they would come and say, I have a 1 million people with me in, in my data bank and they consume from me. And so such a large uh, ecosystem they create, but they're not able to sweat out that ecosystem, right? That's also very strong inherent value creation uh, structure. There's also a timing where uh, you you have built something extremely innovative and this is a path breaking like uh, if you are doing in anything in business intelligence artificial intelligence and things of that nature these are all future you know uh, if you're doing anything in green energy and a lot of things things which are what i call sunshine sectors that's also a time where you will be able to <coughs> uh, do a lot of valuation so this is uh, covers my perspective of uh, what kind of evaluation you need to do. I'll also touch upon uh, two points. Uh, whenever you are looking for valuing businesses, uh, if you're a non-performing asset at this stage, which means that you, you're not making money or you don't see, especially in these times, you don't see that your business is going to perform in four, five, six months, seven months, one year, uh, and you don't see yourself. And this is my genuine advice to business owners that you're not ready for one year more investment in the business that you can sustain. Be absolutely honest right away, right today itself. Don't even wait for Monday. Start going, start going in the market and asking for a right buyer. You might get it. If you delay this cycle, you might erode the value of the asset completely. You know. So one of the companies called me is in business which is badly affected in these times, and asked him a question. He says, "I can, I can still pay for two, three months of my my bills, my salaries, and that thing." I said, "Do you think it's going to change everything in two, three months?" And if you feel that this is not, and we all know this is not, then why don't we take decision right now? Why do you want to be emotional about it? Take the decision to exit the business right now and, and be fair that you will not get the what you ask for it. The market will decide what you are worth today and go with the market and take whatever you get from this today. Sometime I've seen a lot of deals gone crashed because the expectations were unrealistic at both sides. And at this time, this is a buyer market. Right. This is not a seller market. So you, you have to go with the market. At this stage, you need to understand what market is telling you. So if you are a non-performing asset, normally your buyer is somebody who's more strategic, somebody who can turn around your asset and can make it profitable. Right? It can be your somebody seeing a forward integration, backward integration, somebody is a value addition to the business, or something which you miss in your business currently to turn around that business, he can bring that fix. He can bring that fix. He knows that he can bring that fix, but he's also taking a risk of going into an asset which is non-performing. So it's always been strategic. 70% of buyers would come become, become strategic and only 30% financial investors. But if you are a performing asset, then your 70% of buyer is, is financial and 30% is strategic. So first place yourself where you are, where you want to be and, and, uh, and structure. So <clears throat> this was a, a, a 
you know, I wanted to share 45 minutes. Uh, I've already done seven minutes over. We started about five minutes late. So uh, this is a, a today's topic was valuation. Uh, Business X is a platform of Franchise India, which helps companies to find their value. Uh, and then we could also help them in terms of either raising equity or selling the asset. This is what we do at Business X. If you have any need on any help you require, or even want to understand further down in terms of what you should do in, in, in your in your call for uh, raising equity or or selling your business or something like that. And and these days there should be no harm in in the open that if you if you want to really go out of this business and, and that I think is changing very fast and this has helped last five, six years when people were open about uh, talking uh, about this because they should not wait for this bigger damage to happen. And if you cannot openly talk you are actually doing already started doing a damage to your business. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope that I gave you uh, some insights and hopefully you liked some of the parts of this. All three series are available, invest, scale and value. Next week, we again start the same series. We'll add a few topics and we continue to add uh, like in valuation. I'll go deeper into uh, some more, more detail on the valuation side and on the invest side, we'll take some case studies and scale also we'll take some case studies. We'll continue to uh, work on this, continue to enhance the knowledge of our subscribers, uh, people who have trusted Franchise India. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, uh, so Sonali, over to you, please. Thank you so much for the wonderful session, sir. Uh, it was absolutely great, as always, listening to you and your wonderful insights. Uh, we have a few questions lined up, uh, up with us. I know we are running short of time, but uh, would it be fine if we take a few questions at the end now? Sure. Uh, so the first question that we have is from Mr. Manish Behra. He says, on what parameters should freelancers focus on to value their business? They must be working independently. You know, so this is very tricky, uh, Manish, in terms of freelancers, uh, what kind of business you are in? Are you in consulting or you building a business? Uh, and, and again, the problem would lie that if you are a freelancer, the business is around you. And uh, and uh, if you're raising capital because you feel that what something which you incubated is good and now it can be scaled and you need capital for that. Another reason which is very important sometimes, you know, I have seen people raising money without even defining why they want to raise. So unless and until you go deep down and say, Manish, and say where you need this capital, what would it capital do? You know, capital needs to sweat out. Where are you going to deploy that? If your business is freelance and it's micro business is more, uh, you know, depend on you itself, where is this money going to go? And if you have a very clear and firm idea, which can create shareholder value, uh, then obviously you can raise, anybody can raise money. Uh, any good idea can raise money. That's not a problem. Okay. Uh, so the next question is from Mr. Selva Ganesh. He says, as a franchisee, what should be the profit before tax to look for an FMCG? I understand early years may not be paying enough, but what would be the average? More franchise uh, uh, ROI uh, business is not more for valuation, but uh, uh, you know, average franchisee returns, which we call the the return on investment, ranges from anything which is twenty percent to twenty five percent in FMCG kind of business, which means three to four years uh, it would take you to uh, four years or would take you to get return on capital. It's a low margin business. FMCG is a low margin business, and uh, and I can go answer this even more specific sometimes. Uh, I shy away giving these numbers because I don't know the brand and the business of marginal or anything which is discussed and just throwing numbers is not a good idea. Uh, you know, it can be better, better performance also depending on what business model it is and uh, what margins uh, it's in integrated player or it's just a trading company. So it depends on which, which position it is. If you're an integrated player, you obviously have better margins, hence better profitability, better returns. Uh, but if you are a trader, then you're just trading, then you have only a trading margin. So it all depends on that. So, uh, so our next question is from Mr. Sriram. He says, in case of e-commerce companies, they are accumulating losses year after year for several years, but they still are able to attract huge funding continuously during various periods. In these cases, did the priority of profitability change? No, no, no. If you misunderstood my statement. Uh, valuation would always be done on the profitability. But I have never said to you that the profitability would come in the first year, second year, third year, right? 
So while there is a larger goal to eventually hit profitability, and that's the end shareholder value. Like in older years, you know, I don't know how much of you would follow, but you know, I bought a share for a company called Jindal Vijayanagar Steel, and it was a pre-launch offer, and and it took six years for the plant to get set up. and 6 years the plant started functioning and then plant started selling and then the company became profitable and we invested in 6 years back when the plant construction was to start right those time ipos were like that so shareholder also is like that shareholder understands that when you are investing in a company this has a 10 year 15 year horizon but he knows the horizon he knows he can see the end of the tunnel where is the tunnel going and and every stage of of benchmark which means that year to 2020 to year 2021 is your valuation and your subscriber based and your uh, performance on balance sheet is improving are your margins improving are your acquisition cycles improving are your consumer base increasing is your so all that is is increasing and your valuation is increasing by the time as an investor i see my valuation either intact or growing i am happy with the company and that's what happens with these young startups when they raise capital they they put this whole projection and any time they are not able to fulfill that projection things start changing the shareholder is very worried and they they push these investors and sometimes that's why these mistakes also start happening because the founder gets into this whole worry to really cover up the balance sheet and and try to get into businesses which is not there i mean some companies have become confused like look at olx started for what known for what doing what so this this is all because the shareholders are after their life and they they want now they have already parked for 6 years 7 years they want returns and they want profitability and and they start selling everything they start selling everything and this is what happened in lot of startups and that's why startups went wrong because uh, they they are not able to uh, they change their core business model because uh, uh, the business model was not more good but uh, i mean these are closed door uh, uh, board room meetings where if you have if you done mistake the neither investors are going to agree neither the founder is going to agree what they going to do is they going to try to save that investment and they want to try to save the investment means sell whatever you need to be done get your balance sheet right that's what people start doing right great so i think we just take up the last question very quickly so it is from mr joy khan he says other than investors what kind of consultants can founders approach for selling states apart sorry i missed your question uh other than just investors what kind of consultants can founders approach for selling states you can go to any kind of consultants you uh, you know anybody who's your industry reference you have investment bankers there are so many investment bankers uh, even business x and equity india is also a i bank like you can have industry consultants reference points uh, sometimes just pick up phone and the buyer you know is I mean, I always ask people who should be your buyer, and they normally say, "I know my competition; he can buy." Me. I say, just pick up phone and call him up. If you are not calling, I'll call you on behalf of you. So, what should we worry in terms of reaching out if you genuinely feel that somebody is there? Uh, but if you need somebody to take up a, a full landscape for you, that who can be uh, a buyer in your business, uh, then obviously go and take a professional advice. Now there are certified evaluators; you can only get valuation from them, and uh, and they do the right valuation for you. again i said they do what they do is more you know quantitative valuation uh, sometimes as a business seller even if your valuator comes and tells you you are worth 25 crores you should not be happy about it if you don't feel that you are not 25 crores because you run the business you know what your value should be right uh, you can you can get a little bit of good bill but you cannot be unrealistic if you become unrealistic you will never get us buyer so seller has to always understand and appreciate that you need to look from the from the buyer's eyes and if you can see through and say if i would have been in the same place same time i would have also paid the same price if you can match that that's the value of your business wonderfully said sir so with this i think uh, we'll just wrap up the session thank you so much once again sir uh, thank you for a wonderful session and we'll see you uh, it will be a pleasure seeing you again next saturday at 3 pm for another session of the series Uh, anything you would like to say in the end? Uh, I said enough. For fifty minutes is quite a bit of fifty <laughs> minute listening. Me also is a, is a thank you to everyone and thank you very much for having the patience to hear from us and uh, and thank you from uh, Franchise India and Business X. Uh, thank you very much.